everybody and welcome to Storm Reads and today I'm going to be doing my uh, partial kind of part of my TBR for the month of February. Um, this video is going to be about my TBR game. I'm going to do five rolls, um, no more than five rolls because I have my Retro Romance Readathon in February and I'm going to hope to be able to get as many of my choices for that onto this TBR but if not I need to um, be lenient with my TBR for the game. Um, I am still not doing any like punishments or extra rolls or anything like that. I just want to get the feel for the game and to see if I can actually uh, stick to the TBR and, and everything. So speaking of that, let's see how I did in January. So I had six rolls in January because I decided to go ahead and do an extra roll just because I thought I I could handle what I had on my TBR because they were some that I wanted to read. And so the first one was I was just getting started and so I picked a business and so the business was a medical personnel and so I read um, Murder on Amsterdam Avenue by uh, Victoria Thompson. I gave that one five stars. I absolutely loved it. It's one of my favorite series. It's the Gaslight series. This was number 17. And they're just getting better and better to me um, from like number 15 so far on has been like really really good so I'm glad I got to that one and then uh, the next one was I spend too much time alone and so uh, my f family's worried about my love life and I need to read a romance and so for that one it's The Hollow by Nora Roberts and I am in the middle of that one I am um, I got two hours left on the audiobook, so I'm pretty sure I will get that one finished before the end of February because uh, right now I'm filming this, it's the 26th, so I still have time. And then, <clears throat> excuse me, the next one was um, a movie with a friend, and so I had to use the movie generator, which that is a scary generator because you never know what you're going to get. But, um,. I was to read Devil in a Blue Dress by Walter Mosley. I am currently reading this one as well. And I am about halfway through, so I'm pretty sure that I can finish this before the end of the month as well. And then, um, things are getting scary, so I needed to read a thriller or a horror book. And for that, I picked Daisy Darker by Alice Feeney. I'm sure everybody's already seen my thriller vlog and how that went. It didn't go very well. I gave it two stars. I was not a fan of how it ended or anything like that. But I can see the appeal that other people might have. And then um, the next one was uh, You Solved the Case Almost. And uh, I got bonked on the head and now I'm seeing stars. So I had to do a five star prediction. And so this one I did Murder at Serpentine Bridge by Andrea Penrose and I picked a great one which I knew was pretty sure that I would love this one and I did indeed give it five stars. It's the latest book in the Rexford and Sloan series. I think number six is what it is. I'm not quite sure. But I absolutely love this series and I was excited to see that there's going to be another one coming out this year. So can't wait to get into that one. And then the last one I have is I landed in the thriller room and I landed on adult and so I needed to read an adult thriller and I had to do a prompt for that and the prompt that I got was western themed and at first it was old west but I decided to change it to like western country or something like that because not all the time will old west work. And so for this one, I picked um, Back of Beyond by C.J. Box. It was the first book in the Highway Quartet, I believe it's called. And this one was, it was okay. Um, it wasn't really that thrilling for it saying that it was a thriller. And, uh, but I gave it three stars, so it wasn't too bad. So overall, I've done really well with this small TBR that I have picked for this game so far. I'm in the middle of the last two that I need to finish to finish up the prompts that I had so I think I'm doing pretty good so far and now the sun decides to come out so <laughs> it's a little bright <laughs> okay, so now I'm going to just mention really quick books that I would like to 
get onto the TBR if I can, but if I can't, they are going to be books that I'm going to end up be end up reading anyway because they are buddy reads and things like that or read-alongs and stuff like that. So uh, the first one is um, Sapphire Flame by Ilona Andrews. I am reading this series with my friend Barb, so this is number four in that series. I'm really excited to get to that. Um, it's a kind of an urban fantasy slash romance and yeah, it's a lot of fun. It's got um, magic and all that kind of stuff. It's one of those things that for me it's really hard to explain, but I like it. <laughs> um, Weathering Heights by Emily Bronte. I was supposed to read this for January, but I didn't get into it. It's a buddy read with um, Mel Mac in her Discord. And um, I was told that this had a cold hero in it, because I guess, um, is it Heathcliff? Is that his name? doesn't say on the back. Oh, wait, there it is. Yeah. Heathcliff. I thought that was his name. Uh, he's a, a cold hero, apparently. And uh, I know this is like a book that some people like and some people don't, and I'm kind of curious about it. I've never read Emily Bronte before, and I, I liked her sister, Charlotte Bronte, so I'm a little curious to see how this goes. Uh, since it was a cold hero, and I didn't think I was going to have time to get to it, um, in January, I've decided to roll it over to February so that I could use it for my prompt of Cold Hero because this will definitely fit retro romance because it's definitely old. So, <laughs> going to do that for that. So, I, I need to get that one in. And then, um, The Killing Time with Cozies, we do two scavenger hunt picks a month. Um, we talk about them on Saturday in Tiffany's the Beach Bum Bookworms YouTube channel. We do that there on Saturdays. And um, I kind of run the Discord and she runs the YouTube channel for The Killing Time with Cozies. And uh, we, even though it's called Killing Time with Cozies, uh, people read other things. And so, therefore, your scavenger hunt picks do not have to be just cozy mysteries. They can be anything. And so, the first one is Elderly or Mature Sleuth is what we're doing for that one, and I'm probably going to go with um, Agatha Raisin, the first book. I've always wanted to try that series. I know it's kind of hit or miss with people, and so I'm kind of curious if I'm going to like it. I like the TV show, but I'm sure that the books are going to be a lot different, and I know she's like a character that um, might take a little getting used to because she's because I know on the TV show at first I wasn't quite sure if I would like her, so I'm just kind of curious. So the second one is purple on the cover, so I will probably pick one of my retro romances for that, just so that it makes it my life a little easier. <laughs> and then we have a read-along, which is um, the Southern Sewing Circle, and we are reading one book a month, and I can't get these on audiobook, so the only way I can get them are through an ebook or something so that kind of puts a damper in things and so but yeah the second book is going to be death threads by elizabeth lynn casey and so i have that one so i would like to be able to put some of these on my tbr but if not that's okay well i'm not going to make my february uh tbr game books high priority in February just because I have my retro romance readathon but I still wanted to go ahead and do the game because I mean I just started it so I thought it would be fun to see what I land on this go around because um, one of the things is you never know where you're gonna land because it just really depends on what I do um, it's a continuous game so I could land on the same things that I had like last time I don't know and I actually think I do land on a couple that I had in the January round. So yeah, you just never know where you're going to land on there. So it's kind of fun that way. And so now I'm going to go ahead and roll and see what I get. Okay, so since I'm still trying to figure out my own rules to my own game, <laughs> I think I'm going to uh, allow, if I start a new game, in one of these rooms that I will allow myself to like move over one if I want on 
whenever I roll. Like, so if I roll here, I can move this way, or if I, I can move that way, or whatever. Only, only one time, just kind of like whenever I enter for the first time, I can stay in this room and play, or I can move into one room. Um, I'm going to do that, and we'll see how it goes. Like I said, kind of making the rules up as I go, but we'll see. <laughs> okay, so, uh, first spin, got my, my dice here. It's going crazy. Okay, so it's uh, landed on a three. And since I have the retro romance readathon, I'm going to go ahead and go over to um, the romance room, and that'll be my ones. And so one, two, three. And I've landed on favorite trope. So here's. Some of my stack of retro romance readathon books, and so I'm going to look in those and see if I can find a favorite trope. And then I will let you know whatever I pick. For my first roll, you would have seen that I decided to, I chose to go to an, a room over here, which is the romance room, and then I had a roll of three, and so it landed me up here on favorite trope. So, my favorite trope in romance, uh, well, one of them is um, marriage of convenience or something to that, you know. And it's also one of the prompts on the Retro Romance Readathon. So, works out really great that I got this and so that I can read An Immodest Proposal by uh, Patricia Oliver. And this is a Signet Regency romance. And it says, um, it says, Lady Cynthia Longsdale was young, newly widowed, and fabulously wealthy. The ideal prey for every fortune hunter in the realm. Cynthia, however, refused to look in their direction, nor would she let her father wed her to yet another elderly lord. Instead, she would take immodest advantage of being sinfully rich. She would choose a handsome young man and pay him to join her in a marriage that would at least would be an honest bargain, not an odious deception. Captain Brian Sheffield, who, who was an honorable as he was in need of funds, fit the bill to perfection. But when this desperate gentleman agrees to be her husband for hire, Cynthia discovered to her dismay that there was a part of the bargain she had not bargained on. The class of the captain's icy pride and her own hot-blooded desires. So, there we go. I really like this cover. It's very pretty. Now it's time for the uh, second roll. Which is a two. So since I'm over here and I'm on where I can go to the green, I'm just going to go over here and then from here I can, you can't see it, but it's the green thriller. So I'm going to go over here and then I will count out to, so I'm going to go over here and then one, two. always forever going to be knocking over my little E.T. Okay, so this one says, uh, you solved the case almost. I had this one last go around, so um, this one is, um, well, you solved the case almost. You were hit from behind, so I need a five-star prediction. And I'm horrible at five-star predictions. Although, I did really well this first round, or last round, but I don't know. So, I will be back with something that I think may be a five-star prediction. For the next roll, I landed on, you solved the case, well, almost. You were hit from behind before you could confront them. Now you are seeing stars. Pick a five-star prediction. I had this one last go around, but I did really well. So, hopefully I will do well again. 
this time I am picking uh, Murder on St. Nicholas Avenue, I think it is. It's by Victoria Thompson. It is the 18th book in the Gaslight series. I really, really like this series, and the last several have gotten five stars from me, so I'm kind of hoping that this one will. The only slight I'm not quite sure about is this is going to be a case that neither Frank nor Sarah are involved in. Um, they are away, and uh, Miss O'Neill, who is one of their friends, I think the next-door neighbor, um, her daughter got married to, I think, a wealthy, a semi, seemingly wealthy gentleman. And she is excited about that until, uh, of course, the husband has been murdered and her uh, niece is the one that's going to be held responsible for it. And so she really would like Frank to be able to investigate, but he's not in town, so it's going to be up to her and the uh, unlikely gang that uh, we've already, we already know um, the people that are in the in the uh, household um, the young who all of a sudden I can't remember their names May I think it's May May uh, my anyway so like some of the people that are in the household that always help solve the case anyway so they're going to have to be the sleuths in this one so it could go either way I'm not sure I could still really really enjoy it because it's in the same era and it's got people that I know or it could be missing something because it doesn't have Frank and Sarah, and so I'm not sure. We'll see. Okay, so the third row. Is it eight? If you can see that. Oh, I made a friend. So it says, your next door neighbor stops by, look at you, making a friend, let a friend pick your book. So, I will have to decide what friend I'm going to let pick my book. I, I never even thought about thinking about that, so I will do that, and then I will let you know what book. That's kind of scary. So I landed on your your next door neighbor stops by look at you making friends let your friend pick your TBR or pick a book for your TBR and so I went ahead and picked my friend Barb um, figured she could be the first person that picks a book from my list of things and um, what I did was give her three retro romances to pick from um, if I don't have like set certain kind of books that I need to read for a month then I'm just going to let them pick whatever they want they can pick like one of their favorite books that they want me to read or something like that but this time I really did want to hone in on some of the actual books that I have interest in for a retro romance readathon so I have the ladies of Missalonghi or something like that from Colleen McCullough um, this one I just hauled recently in, um, I think it's my try a chapter deal. I, I did a little haul in that vlog, I think it is. But yeah, this was recently hauled. And I also have Foreign Affairs by Eva Rutledge. Um, this one is a Harlequin romance. It's uh, number 3283. This one definitely will uh, fit for the uh, category romance if it got picked. And then I also have Nora Roberts, uh, this, the second book in the Stars of Mithra, which is Captive Stars. This one will get read no matter what because I'm going to be reading it for one of the prompts. But I thought I'd see if she picked it or not, you know, let her, let her try. But out of these three, she picked this one. <laughs> so... I will be reading uh, Ladies of Missolonghi, which is kind of cool. I'm kind of excited that she actually did pick this one because I found an audiobook for this one, so that's kind of cool. So at least one of my <laughs> retro romances has an audiobook to kind of help me along. Okay, so roll number four.
seven. Oh, you spend too much time alone. Let's see. Okay, you spend too much time alone. Your family and friends are worried about your love life. Read a romance book. All right. So, that's cool. At least I've got two romances on here. So, I will let you know what I picked. So, on roll number four, I ended up with... I think I got this one last time, too. It's... You spend too much time alone. Your friends are worried about your love life. My poor character that I have here... Um, I, it's, it's, I made up a character, don't know their name, but it's a character. <laughs> Must spend a lot of time alone. Anyway, so friends are worried about, um, love life, so I need to read a romance book, and so, uh, I'm going to pick Daughter of Merganac, I can not pronounce that, but it's by Constance Heaven. It says, Intrig intrigue and romance am amidst the turbulent splendor of the 19th century France. Um, by now, you've probably seen my uh, Try a Chapter vlog where I featured this, but I decided to uh, keep it for retro romance because it did sound interesting and it had these really pretty yellow sprayed edges, which is another prompt that's on the retro romance readathon. So, two books down for that. Yay! Okay, so... Here is my last roll for February. Wow, it's going crazy. Nine. Okay. One, two, three, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh. Back in thrillers. <laughs> so. I landed on Thriller Adult. I have no more rolls, so Thriller Adult is what it's going to be. And, yeah, I have no clue. So, I will go look for that, and I will come back and let you know what I picked. Okay, so for my last roll, I landed on Adult Thriller again in the Thriller Room, which is pretty much where I ended my first game. So, hopefully this doesn't become a thing. <laughs> But anyway, I did want to read more Thriller this year. The only thing is, is now I have to choose a reading prompt. And I forgot to choose a reading prompt after I did the roll, so I'm just going to do it now. And so I have my reading prompts up on my computer. And I have a number generator here. And uh, I have 76 prompts, so I'm just going to randomize one and see what happens. Okay, so I have, looks like number... 28 and 28 says number number in the title okay I will be back in one moment to see if I can find one with a number in the title okay so this was a lot harder than I thought because um, all of the thrillers that were on my like list of thrillers none of them had a number in them um, none of the ones that uh, I thought sounded interesting had a number in them. I looked on Goodreads and went through adult thrillers trying to find ones with numbers and ones that were coming up are ones that I really wasn't a big fan of or just I wasn't in the mood for. But then I finally found this one and it's called One of the Girls by Lucy Clark. I've never read Lucy Clark before. I have no clue. But uh, it says that it, it was got a four a 4.03 rating so it seems like people are liking it um i know nothing about it but it says it was supposed to be the perfect weekend away six very different women travel to the stunt sun-soaked greek isles on a bachelorette trip to celebrate lexi's upcoming wedding from the glorious ocean view to the quaint taverns and whitewashed streets the vacation seems too good to be true but dangerous undercurrents run beneath the sunset swims and midnight cocktails because each of the women is hiding a secret. Someone is determined to make sure that Lexi's marriage never happens and that one of them doesn't leave the island alive. Uh, so, yeah. Sounds pretty much like most normal uh, get-together 
where there's a group of uh, people, somebody always dies or whatever, you know. It doesn't sound like something that hasn't been done before, but it sounds kind of interesting. And it's on the Greek Isle, so that sounds kind of cool. And so I'm just going to give this one a try and see what happens. I do want to read more thrillers. And the one thrillers that I did find that I wanted that had numbers in them were young adult and not adult. That's what makes this a little harder because you have to horn in on, like, one certain, like, age kind of thing for them and when I read the the little uh, things that I have in my rooms so I thought that would make it a lot more fun it also makes it a lot more hard to find things and so yeah so we're gonna go with this and hope for the best I don't have the best track record with thrillers <laughs> so but I'm wanting to read more and try to figure out which kind I like and which kinds I don't so we'll see so those were all the rule, the rolls that I had for my um, TBR game, and I got lucky and got three books off of my pile of retro romances onto my TBR. So that's pretty cool. And then I had um, one one thriller, and then a five star prediction. Those two were different books that I didn't get. But that's pretty cool that I got three out of the five. So I'm really happy with that. And I'm, I'm happy with the picks overall. I think it's kind of doable that I can get through these. Um, the other two... I did get two on here that don't or that don't have audiobooks. But at least this one does. So then the other two... So at least out of the five, I have three that have audiobooks. So that will help me get through these five books while I have to um, physically read a lot of my retros so I don't expect to read a whole lot in February but I hope to enjoy what I do read print books audiobooks whatever and so yeah I'm excited though that three of them got on here so anyway let me know what you think about the picks that I had for this round have you heard of any of the books? Um, I'd be interested if you've heard of any of the retro ones, but, you know, has anybody read that one thriller that I put on here? Is it worth trying or not? You know, let me know down in the comments, and I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. And I will see you all in the next video. Bye.